All right, guys, so here's one way to make a fidget spinner in Tinkercad. Most important thing here is that we keep our dimensions and know our dimensions so that we can make this object fit into our model. This is a standard bearing. It's used on skateboards and roller skates. And you can download the dimensions on the internet for a standard bearing, but every Manufacturer is going to be a little bit different, and there's model numbers too. So it's important that you get your own dimensions. So we did this in class together, and we used a caliper. We measured the outside diameter. We measured the inside diameter. And we measured the thickness. So here's the dimensions that we came up with. So we took multiple measurements to make sure that we were getting it right, no errors. We got an average, and then we added a little bit of wiggle room for the printer. So the outside diameter, we came up with 22.15 millimeters. The inside diameter, we measured three times. We got the average. We added, we subtracted a little bit for the inside diameter so we could put our model through that center hole and then we measured the width we got 7.05 millimeters we added a little bit of wiggle room for the printer and we got 7.25 millimeters so to start we're going to bring a cylinder hole onto the work plane and we're going to make that hole the exact dimension that we had calculated with the calipers. So that center hole should be the outside diameter 22.15 on the x-axis 22.15 on the y-axis and then the thickness is the width which was 7.25 All right, now we need to bring in a cylinder solid. And this solid is gonna be the ring that goes around the hole. So it needs to be significantly bigger than the hole. So the thickness, again, if you forgot, just click on this, 7.25. Hmm. seven point two five millimeters now the solid needs to be bigger than the hole and our hole is twenty two point one five so let's add three millimeters to this so we'll have a three millimeter ring that goes around the outside so we'll make it twenty five point one five on the x-axis and twenty five point one five on the y-axis Now we can box select both of our objects. We can align them together in the center on the x-axis, align them on the y-axis in the center, and then group them together. And we'll have a ring that's exactly the size to hold our bearing. Now we're gonna need three of these. So let's go ahead and duplicate once, duplicate twice, and you don't see anything happening because they're on top of each other. And now we're going to move one to this side and one to this side. So I'm going to use my arrow keys and right now my snap grid is set to one millimeter. So if I press the arrow key it's only going to move one millimeter at a time. So I'm going to change the snap grid to five millimeters. That way every time I hit the arrow key it's going to move five millimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll click on the center one. Now I'm going to go left with my arrow keys. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we just moved six times at five millimeters each. So we moved each one about 30 millimeters. After you're done, go ahead and change your snap grid back. And I'm going to go ahead and place mine to 0.1 millimeters. 
They are evenly spaced apart. They are symmetrical. They are the same size. Now we're ready to create the body. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a box from our basic shape list. Bring it onto the work plane. I'm going to orbit around by right clicking and dragging. I'll click on my ring to remind myself what the dimension is because this box needs to be the same dimension on this axis right here. So this thickness should be 25.15 millimeters. This right here should be the same height as my ring. So I'll click on my ring, remind myself that measurement, 7.25. So on the Z axis, 7.25. And then we're going to slide it into position here. Now we're going to drag this to about halfway through each of our rings. So don't grab the white one. If you grab the white handle to scale, you'll mess up your, your measurement. So if you look carefully, between the two white squares is a black square, and that will scale on the x-axis only. That way it doesn't mess up your dimension that you already got. Okay, about halfway through. We're going to do it on the other side. Grab the black square. Do not grab the white ones for this. Scale on the x-axis only. And it looks like I went a little too far in that. So take your time. Do the best you can. Getting it right in the center. There we go. And because we changed it to 0.1 millimeters, you can be very precise. Okay, I'm going to orbit by right clicking and dragging, and I'm going to use the align tool just to make sure that the red rectangle is aligned and not hanging off on one side or the other. So I'm going to align it on the y axis. Do not align it here, or it will pull everything to the center. From this point forward, all you have to do is box select everything, ungroup it first so you can see the holes inside the ring, and then group it and watch the magic happen. So you want to be careful and make sure that everything came out right. So zoom in, make sure there's no chunks kind of hanging over, make sure there's nothing misaligned. If there is, don't be afraid to start over. Just highlight your shape again with box select and ungroup it. Align it again and try again. This is a single arm spinner. So up here, I'm gonna change my file name. Always include your name, last name, first name, period number, and a description of what it is. Now we can export this model by clicking on it, clicking export, the selected shape, STL, it goes into your downloads folder and you can turn this in as your single arm spinner.